and welcome to California Bountiful. I'm your host, Aubrey Aquino, and we have a very special episode that is sure to make you cheese. We're gonna trek along the California Cheese Trail, and our first stop is in Petaluma at Marin French Cheese Company. It's the country's oldest cheese company, where they use traditional French cheese-making techniques to make award-winning California cheese. I am so excited. We are inside the cheese shop at Marin French, and I'm here with Bonnie. I need to know all about the history of this place. Well, I'm happy to tell you that we've been operating in this same historic location in West Marin County, California, since 1865. Wow. Yes. And this cheese shop seems to have a lot of cheese, and it looks like so much fun. Yeah, so in addition to being a creamery, we are a retail location where people can come and visit. This cheese shop offers a variety of the cheeses that we make here on site, all of our award-winning cheeses. We also offer cheeses from other local producers and then other accompaniments from local producers as well, like nuts, dried fruits, crackers, pickles, anything that you'd ever want to pair with cheese, you can find here in our shop. And that includes beer, wine, cider, <laughs> Very nice. and non-alcoholic <laughs> beverages. Good stuff. So this is like a destination. People will come here if they're in the area, they'll come pick up some provisions and just enjoy the day. Absolutely. We operate on a historic ranch, and so we have quite large grounds where people can come and picnic. So there's a pond, we have tables and chairs scattered throughout the property. So you can come get everything you would need for a nice cheese board picnic, even a sandwich at our cafe. Or often people will stop here on their way to or from wine country or to Point Reyes on the coast. Very nice. Now you said cheese board. I did. And I see we have a lovely one right here. You're going to show me, I want you to show me, how to make a cheese board that looks as beautiful as this one. Generally, when you're making a cheese board, you want to start with kind of your mildest flavors and then move into stronger oh. or um, more unique flavors that would stand more on their own. I always include Petit Breakfast because this is a cheese that's completely unique to Marin French. Nobody else makes an, a young, unaged brie like this, and this cheese is tied directly to our history as a creamery. Ooh. This was the first cheese that was developed here at Marin French Cheese Co. in 1865. It's kind of springy, it has a little bit of like a bready, tangy flavor, but still quite mild. I'll put that kind of right over here. And this is another one of our best-selling cheeses. It's also a significant award winner. Um, in 2005, our Triple Cream Brie won uh, gold in the category of Brie at the Ooh. World Cheese Awards. And it was the first American-made soft ripened cheese to win in that category, which is traditionally won by French companies or other European producers. Um, and so that was a really big deal when we won that award. Um, and this continues to win awards for us. Just this year, it won a World Cheese Award again. And Bonnie, not to be cheesy, but you know, my name's Aubrey, <laughs> and oh, I love me a good brie. <laughs> I never thought about that. And this is from Oakdale, California. It's just the Oakdale Aged Gouda. Ooh, so yummy. I'll kind of put that down there as a placeholder. And what's really nice about this cheese is it's firm. It has a little bit of a salty, um, kind of caramelly crunch to it. And so it's just quite a different texture and flavor than everything else that we'll have on the board. A marinated goat cheese. Oh. That's from our sister creamery, Laura Chanel. So these are dried discs of aged fresh chev. So it's a fresh chev that's oh, nice. aged and then marinated in oil. And we have different flavor options. I love spice, so I chose spicy for this one. Now we're gonna get into some of the kind of stronger flavored options from Marin French. Mm -hmm. um, one being our petite truffle. These are little four ounce versions of our triple creme. We have them in different varieties. Our final cheese that we're gonna put on the board is Golden Gate. This is a washed rind version of our triple creme. Um, and a washed rind means that during the aging process, they, this is hand washed with a brine solution multiple times throughout the aging. The best thing you can do when putting a cheese board together is invite people to eat it and enjoy it and make sure they know there's no wrong or right way. Don't feel intimidated or don't feel like there are rules you have to follow. It's really about figuring out what, what satisfies you. 
Great. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thanks, Aubrey. I can always appreciate a good cheese board, whether it's to share with friends or all for myself, because cheese is good for you. You can grill it, you can melt it, you can even dip it. We're talking about cheese, of course. And with over 1,800 varieties, there's a fromage for your every mood. Not only is our versatile friend delicious, but it can also benefit your health. Cheese is naturally high in protein and calcium, and when it comes from grass-fed cows, it's high in omega-3s and vitamin K, which can actually benefit your cardiovascular health. Here are three tips to help you enjoy cheese. Tip number one is to watch your portion control. You really only need about a fourth a cup of shredded cheese, one ounce of hard cheese, and half a cup of a ricotta cheese or a cottage cheese. Remember, a little goes a long way. Tip number two is to watch the sodium. Blue cheese and feta cheese are higher in salt, but a goat's cheese or a Swiss cheese are naturally lower. And tip number three is to try and pair it with other health promoting foods like a salad or a piece of fruit. We hope this gives you just a few more reasons to say cheese please. The California Bountiful is brought to you by the California Farm Bureau. We need someone to be there Knowing they'll always care Someone who lights your way each and every day Doing what you love is everything So we can celebrate the joy it brings There's so much to protect in our lives That's why Nationwide is on your side Golden Sky Country Music Festival coming to Sacramento October 14th and 15th with Eric Church. All you gotta do is put a drink in my hand. John Party. Marin Morris. Parker McCullough and Jordan Davis. Lady Wilson. Winona Judd and more. Golden Sky Country Music Festival at Discovery Park in downtown Sacramento. Passes starting at $10 down at GoldenSkyFestival.com. Welcome back. Our next stop on the California Cheese Trail is Spanker Family Farm in Lodi. There they make handcrafted wine and cheese and visitors can see the silly goats, watch cheese being made and picnic by the vineyard. I met my husband at a home winemaking party and he decided that a scientist would probably be really valuable for his enterprise. And at the time he it was a grape grower and he had a hobby of learning to make wine. So, um, so it was, and it was fascinating to me. I had not had any exposure to that, but I was really excited about living in the Central Valley of California because I came from Colorado and numerous other places along the way, but the soil here and the climate here and the crops here were just so astounding to me. Betty Ann Spanker and her husband Chuck's winery opened in 1994 using their high quality Zinfandel grapes. We've had almost 30 years of wine, um, commercial wine production and we, you know, and we love it. But for about, when the girls were in junior high or high school, I always thought it would be nice to have animals on a farm. And a friend gave me three chickens because she got them for her backyard and then her HOA said, uh, no. So, so I got chickens, which was a good start, but I'd aspired to have goats and I had been telling Chuck that I thought it'd be really interesting to do other fermentation science like cheese. The couple's daughters, Kate and Sarah, grew up on the family farm and now take active roles in running the day-to-day -day operations. It's always really resonated with me to, you know, share the love of people and, um, to make people happy. Wine is this joyful, you know, comforting, happy experience. And so then my sister and I went off to college and my mom replaced her kids with kids and got a couple goats. 
and we wanted to come back into the um, family business here at the farm, but you know, making it sustainable, well, how do we diversify so that the land can support you know, three different incomes, and so we started the creamery. So now we have you know, the goats on display, and wine and cheese tasting, and you know, continuing with that you know, hospitality and love part where we want to just spread happiness to everyone. <laughs> You have the day-to-day -day grind during the week and, um, you know, in the mornings from milking and all the animal care, but then to see people just come out and relax and um, enjoy the experience and really get to connect with something that I've grown up with. Um, not a lot of people get to have that true farm experience and so this is the it's less work for them, but they get to still enjoy the fruits of our labor and get to see it how we get to see it every day. You know, yes, we do the hard work, but then there's all the joy that we get from farming. And so it's really fun to see people being able to experience our joy of farming. And they now know that, oh, farming, farming is cool. Farming can be happy and productive and all of this different things. At Spanker Family Farm, they make wine and cheese. Jalapeno queso. Right on property. And they've added agritourism into the fold with farm tours, goat yoga, and tasting opportunities too. Having the um, agritourism part brings the, you know, instead of farming all these millions of acres which people can't really comprehend to, okay, there's 60 acres and there's two acres of goats. And uh, just bringing that relatability to the farming uh, and it helps us being able to actually maintain a farm. We don't have to buy more land or we don't have to sell our land. We can um, keep doing what we love doing and we don't have to get bored by doing one crop. We can, you know, we're doing goats, we're doing the wine, we have the vineyard, we have our native plants, we grow vegetable gardens and sell some of the vegetables in our tasting room when we have time. Sarah explains her dad is the true farmer in the family, through which the farm has been passed down generations, and he runs the tractor. Mom, Betty Ann, is the brains behind the operation, the wine and cheese maker. Her sister Kate pulls double duty as herd manager and graphics designer, while Sarah is the chief milker who also manages the tasting room. It's so much fun to see you know, the next generation, who of course are adults now, doing their thing, but that they just bring a different presentation and, um, and brains and energy to it. And so I'm really proud of them. I'm so proud of my daughters and the things that they've accomplished. And the theme at the heart of this Lodi farm is the spirit of happiness. Just the joy that this, that our family can bring to other people and what our, our land here can bring to our community. I get to see my sister every day. We're working together, but we're also still having all of our meals together and uh, being able to bond and, you know, really getting that connection that I feel like not a lot of other people have. And so when everybody's time comes, we'll know that we have spent as much time together as possible to do the things that we love together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, also on the cheese trail in Modesto is a farmstead that began as a dairy farm more than 100 years ago. Our Farm Bureau foodies insider, Anna Genesi, talks to a fourth generation Fiscalini about the family's legacy in the cheese business. <laughs> Laura, tell us a little bit about the dairy. Our dairy started over 100 years ago. The farm was started by my great-grandfather who immigrated here from Switzerland in 1912. He started the dairy with just 12 milking cows. And Gosh. I know. Today we've grown the operation uh, to over 1,500 milking cows. We've got about 500 acres of farmland. When did the cheese making become part of the family story. I know you've been milking for over a hundred years now, but what, how did the cheese making come into play? So my father started the cheese company in the year 2000. Okay. And he really wanted, quite honestly, his goal was to make the world's best cheese. He was super passionate about the dairy business and he knows we've got a, a great milk source because all the cows are our own. So we really wanted to make a product that we could share with the world. And you see a piece of cheese with our name on it. 
you can know where it came from and we're very proud to have that. So tell me, I know uh, your cheese is marketed as Farmstead. For our folks at home, what does that mean? What does that tell them about that product they're seeing in the grocery store? So Farmstead means that the entire process takes place here. We own the cows, we raise the cows. We are able to provide the freshest possible milk. Each morning we truck the milk just a couple hundred yards from the dairy farm to the cheese plant. Where Which the, is where we're, we're at right now. Right here, so where the process begins. Uh, all the cheese is made here, aged here, all the cut and wrap is done here. And so really it just means that every part of the process is done right here on our So farm. tell me a little bit about your cheese maker. He's also a multi-generation uh, part of that cheese making art as well. Right, so our cheese maker is Alex Borgo and he is a fourth generation cheesemaker. His family currently makes cheese in Canada, but he's made his way here. He's been able to better the process for us. Don't go away. Next up, we sit down with a cheese smith and sample the curds. You're watching California Bountiful. We need someone to be there, knowing to always care. Someone who lights your way each and every day Doing what you love is everything So we can celebrate the joy it brings There's so much to protect in our lives That's why Nationwide is on your side The California Farm Bureau has protected the diverse agricultural interests in the Golden State for over a century. As part of the California Farm Bureau, you'll add your voice to the combined strength of over 34,000 farmers, ranchers, and families through our state. That means more connections, more influence, and more opportunity to fight for the issues that impact your life. With your support behind us, California Farm Bureau's robust government affairs, federal policy and farm pack, and legal teams work tirelessly to advocate at all levels of government protecting and promoting our shared way of life. Together, California Farm Bureau and our members are standing up for farmers, ranchers, and families throughout the Golden State every day, working to cultivate a bountiful future for all Californians. In San Diego, a brewery owner has taken his passion for cheese to a professional level. For our next stop on the California Cheese Trail, let's meet the man behind Cheese Smith Artisan Creamery. Peter Zine got his start in cheese through beer. Farmers who would take the grain from Ale Smith's brew days to feed their cows, then gifted him with raw milk in return. Zine notes many similarities between beer and cheese making, admitting he fell in love with the latter because it scratches the same itch. The cheese making is a passion project, so uh, I don't make cheese by the calendar or the clock. It, it's, it's on my schedule and uh, I want to just make it technically correct. So being from the Midwest, I uh, always loved a good squeaky fresh cheese curd and it's pretty much unavailable out here in Southern California. So I stock our refrigerator here at the gift shop with fresh made curds. Um, typically you could only get them this fresh if you live down the street from a creamery in Wisconsin. <laughs> these are fresh, these are squeaky and I get testimonials from Wisconsin people and that warms my heart. Well, you have this beautiful spread here, um, and so I'm gonna get to taste some. Yes, you are. Why don't you take me through it? Where are we gonna start? Curds. You eat them with your fingers. They're squeaky. All right. Um, because they're so fresh, when you bite through it, you might get this sensation of a squeak, and then um, hopefully you get a, you know, there's a Oh, lot. I got the squeak. Yeah. There's a lot of dill pickle in here, mm -hmm. and dill. Salty. You can taste the freshness in here. That's good. A new one that I have not tried yet, it's been patiently aging for the last five months, is this porcini mushroom gouda. Um, if someone from Denmark's watching me, howda. Uh, <laughs> we say gouda here in the United States, but howda. I didn't know that. Okay, well, uh, that's the, when you're in Europe, make sure you say howda. Howda. I'm curious about the porcini mushroom one, so we're gonna give this a little taste first off. Let's go ahead and just give it a try. Okay. Um, I might just try it like that. Get a little bit of that mushroom. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a unique combination of the of the dairy flavors. 
but it's, uh, I guess the thing I, I really, you don't want in most cheeses is bitterness. Mm -hmm. So whenever I taste one of my new cheeses and it's not bitter, I'm like, good, that worked out I well. I think the taste of mushroom in it. Yeah. I think it's good. Traditional cheddar, um, it has a little annatto in it. You know, you may have wondered why some cheeses are orange and mm -hmm. others aren't. So there's no such thing as orange cheese. <laughs> it's, it's an addition called annatto. It's a vegetable dye. Oh. For the cheddar, I mean, I would just go with our 394. If you want to try this cheddar with just a little drop of honey on okay. it. Okay. And I think, I mean, most people, I'm not sure if you've ever tried honey on your cheese, but it's quite nice. No, I don't think I actually have. Yeah, and so my my bees generously gave this to me. Um, mm -hmm. It's their food, so you don't want to like, take too much of it, but mm -hmm. we harvested this last August. So now for something completely different, um, a cheese made with beer in it. Okay, and, um, and this, you would, I want you to try the nut brown ale with this one. Okay. But we're gonna go for a little shot of this guy. And you're saying this was like a, like a Havarti? Yeah, and it has, um, Oktoberfest, uh, which oh, is a right. malt, malt forward beer that's very popular here. It's definitely a different kind of thing going on with this. The beer is noticeable in a way not like a beer you drink. It, it's gone through a fermentation process with going into the cheese again. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's interesting. Really good. An aged cheese that was made a year ago is my black truffle chowda, another chowda. And, nice. and this has lots and lots of Italian black winter truffle in it, as well as some uh, flavored salts to give it a nice, almost garlic like kick. This has more age on it. Um, I would definitely want to do honey on this because it does have the truffle has kind of added some bitter notes to it. Okay. And a little bit garlicky. Oh, so garlicky, huh? Yeah. Which maybe means I put a little bit too much truffle, but um, hey, I just I want to give well, people their money's worth. I like the honey. Mmm. Oh, I love that with the honey Isn't that cool? and the truffle. That no. is good. It's just a lot of fun for me. And watching people respond positively and, and other professionals that I'm doing something right is kind of a good feeling. Awesome. Well, thank um, you for taking us behind the scenes oh, and pleasure. sharing some of your cheese and doing the tasting Yeah, anytime uh, you're in San Diego or anyone watching, <laughs> come visit us at Ale Smith. Uh, plenty of beer, plenty of cheese. Love it. Thank you. Uh So much cheese, so little time, but we've got time for one more stop along the California Cheese Trail when California Bountiful returns. Someone to be there, knowing to always care. Someone who lights your way each and every day. Doing what you love is everything, so we can celebrate the joy it brings. There's so much to protect in our lives. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Are you looking to uncover more of the bounty of California's rich, diverse, and delicious food and wine scene? Then it's time to get social with us. Find even more great content from farm to fork and everything in between, like recipes behind the scenes on food and wine tours, plus useful info on what's good for you and so much more. Join an engaging community of like-minded foodies and tell us what great story ideas you have for us too. So what are you waiting for? Get in on the conversation now. Find, follow, and talk to us on social at CA Bountiful. You love your pet and would do pretty much anything for them, but sometimes pet healthcare costs can make your wallet growl. That's why we created My Pet Protection, pet insurance designed exclusively for employees like you. Get reimbursed for eligible veterinary expenses. Enjoy extra perks like Vet Helpline, Pet RX Express, and more. Use any vet anywhere. Signing up is easy. Just tell us about your pet and choose your level of reimbursement. My Pet Protection is available only through your employer. Get a no obligation quote today. Our final stop on the California Cheese Trail takes us to the Central Valley's first farmstead artisan goat creamery. It was opened in 2018 by a couple whose dream was to make high quality cheese with the milk produced by their Nubian herd. I was raised um, on a dairy down in Riverside, was a, became a nurse, 
and practiced nursing for 40 years and decided I wanted to do something different and return back to more my ag background, things like that. So I decided, why not get a goat? So it was like, so I got the three. Bella was one of the original. And then they, they were so cute, we got three more. So now, if we had, now we had six, and my husband was like, so what are you gonna do with them? I'm like, I'll make cheese. <laughs> so then we started the process of figuring out how to do it, the rules and everything like that, and ended up here. <laughs> so this is the fun part. Owner and artisan cheesemaker Margie Weber is living out her passion at Rocky Oaks Goat Creamery. What began with just a few Nubian goats has been milked into a year-round operation, and they're also the only goat cheesemaker in all of Fresno County. Hi, pretty. The animals are always happy to see you. They, you know, they will let you know if you're late, things like that. They like their routine. One day we were visiting up in the, in the back with the milkers and I, and the goats saw us, and they thought we were taking too long and walked up. <laughs> so. I prefer, the nursing was great, and I, and I use a lot of the nursing skills in the go, taking care of the goats, but this is definitely more fun. It's much more rewarding. No doubt Margie loves her herd. She's even given them big names to live up to, because each kid is named after a country western singer or a princess. The thing is that we expect a lot from them, and so I think they need to be treated well. We get a, we get a high quality of milk because we feed them well and take care of them. So it's, it's you can only, you, they can only give you what you give them. Plus, when it comes to giving back, Rocky Oaks is helping young minds and others to explore, experience, and get a taste of the goat life. We like you. The Creamery is an excellent place for kids to come out and learn. We're, we're small, they get space, and usually the goats are a big hit. They start, chickens are sometimes too, but it's just for more education. Then they don't know that milk comes from a goat, you know, or where food comes from. It's a bigger disconnect now with the, the, the Uber Eats or all the other different things, because food just shows up. But to see where it's made and things is a whole other process for kids. Margie says it's a labor of love that makes for a happy life. Once she had the goats, she learned to make cheese and now proudly has eight different kinds of premium small batch farmstead cheese, fresh, ripened, and aged. You know, I was only going to have so many goats and just do the, and you know, take holidays off, things like that sort of thing, that it's worth the work. I love that story. Margie has certainly found her calling and clearly loves making cheese. And that's going to do it for our adventure on the California Cheese Trail. For more information and more stops along the California Cheese Trail, you can go to keystrail.org. Thanks for joining us for this special cheesy episode. I'm Aubrey Aquino signing off from Marin French in Petaluma. Don't forget to visit our website, californiabountiful.com. Take care and we'll see you next time for more Bountiful Stories. <laughs>